Okay, let's go first. I will show you in my vSphere. I used to have two ESX servers in my Ant cluster. I've taken that one out, put it in maintenance. You can see here. My uh, my second host went to 168.1.12. What I'm going to do is show you how to take this VM host and put it into one of the other clusters. We'll use new cluster. So let's do that. First of all, we'll say h equals get VM host. Okay, now dollar sign h equals, and there it is. So what I want to do is move this virtual machine host into a cluster. So let's get a reference back to my cluster. That's actually the wrong one, so we're going to do this over again. Get cluster, new cluster. Okay, now we have our cluster, we have our virtual machine host, both in variables so that they are very easy to manipulate. Now, does anybody want to guess what command we're going to be using? It has nothing to do with clusters per se. What we're going to do is use the, the move vm host commandlet. So I'm going to take my host and pipe it to move vm host and use one of its properties, parameters rather, destination. And we'll just supply cl as the destination. And basically, we'll, we'll do run async on that one. Hit enter. I'm given back a task object. Let me type in get task. And you can see that they're all done here. Move host into task and that one's successful. If we go to vs for client you can see move host into cluster. So that was done. That was really quickly handled there. So I've got this host and it's sitting here in maintenance mode. Obviously I can't do a whole lot with it while well, it's in maintenance mode. So what I'm going to do is take it out of maintenance mode. Before I do, I'm going to move it back over to the ant cluster because that's where my, my other happy host is going to be. So let's say h and we will use the move vm host command line again. Destination. This time we're going to do just in the side of the parentheses, get cluster int cluster. Type it out like so. Hit enter. And you can see that's done very quickly. Let's you do cl equals get cluster int cluster. And then cl pipe that to get vm host. You can see now we've got two of them, and uh, of course the second one is still in maintenance mode. Go back over here, we can see that the vSphere client does indeed reflect the very same thing. Let's take that box out of maintenance mode so that we can go ahead and configure HA accordingly. So we will do H using the set VM host commandlet and the state parameter. I forget what the, title, the values are, so we can check that easily. Connected, disconnected, not responding, maintenance. So it's in maintenance mode right now. Let's change it to connected. And you can see that a set VM host operation is in progress. We see the progress bar at the top. And that's done. Exit maintenance mode is done there. And we have our, our icon is successfully changed. So we have a cluster. And let's, let's check the properties of it. Pipe this to format list. So my ant cluster is the, the name there. Several different options on this. For example, HA failover level, HA restart property, VM swap policy, DRS enabled, DRS mode. So my DRS mode is set to partially automated right now. Let me show you where that is in the vSphere client under settings and then DRS and you can see manual partially and fully automated let's change this setting around a couple times so what we're going to do is cluster pipe that to set cluster and we have a bunch of different options I'm going to show you the DRS mode option actually automation level there are a couple of options and you can see here it's a little confusing because DRS mode and DRS automation level they're they're different but they they it looks like they're the same thing I can explain this in fact I should explain it now before I continue let's look at the help on the set cluster command line 
and all will become uh, satisfactorily explained in just a moment. I'm going to page down to some of the DRS-related options here. Okay, DRS mode and DRS automation level. Note that we have a line here, this parameter is deprecated. Use DRS automation level parameter instead. And uh, this one is the one where it says you can set it to fully automated, manual, and partially automated. Now, I can't pretend to understand the, the thinking about why VMware made the decision that they did, but for whatever reason, they, they, did, they, they created a DRS mode parameter and then decided in a later revision of the software that they didn't like that name. Perhaps they had some excellent technical reasons for that, whatever the case may be. And uh, it's been deprecated. So if you look back at the cluster object, which I'll do this again, pipe this to format list, DRS mode, partially automated, that doesn't actually reflect reality. Going back into our settings, you can see, looking at DRS, it's actually not partially automated. It's set to manual. So that sort of further reinforces that this is a bogus thing. So ignore that, and uh, if you want to get tricky, there's ways to hide it from the output, but I'm not going to go into that right now. What I am going to show you how to do, though, is to change that automation level. So let's go back to cluster, pipe it to set cluster and DRS automation level and we will of course cause that error message to spit out disabled fully automated manual partially as specified by cluster which is not really applicable here but we are set to manual right now so let's set it to partially automated so I'm just gonna copy that to the clipboard and paste it here hit enter and it's asking me if I am sure and I'm double sure I'm going to hit enter and that settings change has been made. So let's go confirm it in the GUI. You can see here DRS is now set to partially automated where it was manual before. So not a lot to that. Let's also, I can actually do some more drastic things like enable, uh, disable HA, and uh, there's a lot of different settings on here. So set cluster. So I could, for example, I could change my swap file policy. I explained explain to you how I can modify the and, and apply rather the host profile. So for example, let's get cluster, new cluster. So now I've got both of my new clusters. And if I wanted to rename them, I could um, let's say for each object. Actually, I could use a for loop and I could say, for i equals zero and uh, iterate that and, and produce a, an, an incrementing number. So I'm not going to go through the syntax of that right now. But um, that, that could something you could definitely do to, in order to programmatically change the name to maybe you've got a new naming convention and you wanted to be sure that, that you uh, and you want to go through and renumber everything. You could do that using a, a short script of a, probably a few lines. Thanks for watching. For more information regarding our training videos, please visit www.trainsignal.com.